Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, so this particular suggestion here has been probably one of the most suggested cryptids since I first started my videos and it has been suggested for the longest longest continuous time. The only reason I haven't done it is because again when it comes to anything involving all-star superstar type cryptids monsters the kind that everyone knows about it doesn't really like interest me per se I, I, I'd much rather talk about the more obscure the more minimally known type cryptids but as a favor to everyone that's listening um, and those of you that have continued to suggest this particular cryptid I've, I've gone ahead and I'll talk about it here as a big thank you again for your continued viewership and for your support and this particular cryptid it is definitely an all-star everyone has heard of this particular creature and I'm talking about the moth man so if instantly you know what that is then you are pretty much in league with everyone else this creature even though it's been around or hasn't been seen for almost 50 something years it to this day remains one of the most well known cryptid encounters in the US if not the world I mean there's even a movie that was made about it called the Mothman Prophecies and with this particular cryptid um, what it is where it's from what its purpose is um, to this day it remains as mysterious as when it was first sighted so what is the Mothman um, this was a creature that was sighted in the 1960s that's how far back you have to go but the unique thing was it was only sighted a couple of times within a very short time period in the 60s and then that was it there was nothing else no other reports uh, at least more common known reports of people encountering it sure there are pictures that uh, I'll be showcasing here in a couple of minutes of more recent encounters with the Mothman but by and large this particular instance this particular period in the 60s this is its historic period this is when most people and most credence is given to the encounters that people had so again you have to go back all the way to the 60s specifically around 1966 the first known date that there was an encounter with the Mothman was November 12 1966 so almost um, 50 years in the past so here's what happened uh, November 12 1966 you have to go to West Virginia Clendenine uh, Clendening there was a group of five men who were nearby a grave probably at nighttime they were preparing the grave for a future use that kind of stuff um, tends to happen the day before an actual funeral occurs and what they while they were doing this they described that there was a brown human shape with wings creature that suddenly lifted off from behind the trees nearby the grave and it flew directly right over their heads um, what was interesting to note was that this particular instance November 12th even though it was credited as the first known instance of an encounter with the Mothman it wasn't recognized as being the first one only up until recently um, the, the next experience about three days later that has been cited for the longest time as being the first instance but in actuality it was this one with these group of five men there at the cemetery they were the ones that first experienced the Mothman so that's how they described it they described it as a large brown human shape with wings type creature um, it just flew directly right over their heads one can imagine the gush of wind that these giant wings uh, created but that was it no description as far as anything involving its uh, the Mothman's legendary eyes nothing else um, that that's attributed to the Mothman's characteristics that we all know of no instead that was to occur uh, three days later and here's what happened November 15th 1966 three days later there were two married couples that were near and around an area there in West Virginia they were driving uh, all together in uh, in one of their cars the couple's names were Roger and Linda Scarberry and also Steve and Mary Millette so four people again and they were all in Scar uh, Roger Scarberry's car and apparently they had gone to a place called the World War II TNT factory maybe to visit it 
um, just to hang out the usual thing that young married couples do just to spend an evening together and while they were doing so they noticed that there was something in the distance with two large red lights specifically by an old generator near that World War II TNT factory that's how they described it they noticed two large red lights in the shadow of an old generator plant quite creepy I mean they noticed this as they were driving past that particular factory um, it's one of those things where there you are driving you look out your window and all of a sudden you see something that shouldn't be there and in this case there were two red eyes they described it in fact as glowing red eyes of a large animal and upon closer inspection because at this point they actually stopped the car altogether um, they were intrigued by it um, they were interested to see what it was what those red eyes consisted of I don't know about you but I would just keep going I don't want to uh, necessarily take a chance with those kind of things but in this case they stopped their car they wanted to take a look and sure enough they got a very good look they saw that attached to those red eyes those large red eyes was something that was and this is their words shaped like a man but bigger maybe six and a half or seven feet tall with big wings folded against its back that came actually from the gentleman himself Roger Scarberry the car again they were driving in his car there once they saw that this was not your usual let's say barn owl or not your usual wildlife animal they rightfully so hightailed it out of there but it didn't end there um, because the minute they drove their car down Route 62 for a little while and they reached an exit road guess what there they saw the creature again this time in front of them standing on some kind of ridge near the road so how creepy is that there they were they hightailed it out of there thinking that they've uh, said goodbye to this creature whatever it was for the last time and then they reach an exit and then poof it's right there right in front of them because it was purposely following them and not only that but it beat them to the punch so we're talking about something that um, based on its flight and its speed it can definitely move much much faster than anything involving a car in the 60s could and it was at this point that um, this creature began following them um, they passed that route 62 they passed that exit road and they noticed that um, once they did so then it started following them directly right to the city limits so much so that they were so freaked out that they didn't go to their houses at that point no they went straight to the courthouse that was there in that city and they went straight to one of the cops a deputy by the name of Millard Halstead and told him his story it was probably at this point because no other uh, sightings were occurring that this creature this mothman uh, once it was entering the city limits it decided that was enough and so it just flew away from them but again this was spooky enough for them to just go straight to the courthouse and to show a how it, to the extent that these kids had that these young couples had um, to their honesty uh, this guy deputy miller um, halstead said I've known these kids all their lives, they've never been in any trouble, and they were really scared that night. I took them seriously. So it goes to show, again, to the integrity and the honesty that these uh, young couples had for the for the cop to essentially say, I don't think they're lying. Uh, they Why would they lie? I've known them all their lives. They're not the kind of people that would make kind of stuff up like this. So um, he was taking them very, very seriously. He actually followed them back to the TNT factory. Um, as crazy as it sounds, you know, again, why would you do something like that? But he did. Um, Scarberry, the guy, Roger, he took him in his car back to the TNT factory, but there was nothing there. No sign of the Mothman. However, um, it turns out that later on that night, there was some kind of poltergeist attack uh, within Roger Scarberry's home. So, And he stated that the creature was seen several times there in that home alongside the poltergeist attack I don't know there wasn't there there wasn't much info afterwards with regards to that particular attack uh, but then that's the only known instance that I can think of of the Mothman actually doing something in terms of an attack itself because most of the stories tied to the Mothman are just him or it just flying by observing people but not necessarily doing any direct contact so not really sure about that part but that's according to the info that was listed uh, that's what occurred to Roger Scarberry cut to the next night November 16th 
now that the news had spread with regards to the encounter that the young couple had, the young couples had with the Mothman, um, some of the local townspeople there, of course, rightfully armed at this point, they went straight to that TNT plant uh, to try to see if they themselves could find anything involving this particular Mothman. And some of them actually did encounter it. There was a, a couple by the name of Mr. and Mrs. Raymond Wamsley, and then also a lady by the name of Mrs. Bennett, who had her baby uh, with her in the car. They were in and around that area, too, when all of a sudden they noticed that near and around their car there was a figure parked behind it. And in fact, the way they described it, uh, the Miss Bennett said that it seemed like this creature, whatever it was, had actually been lying down by the parked car as if it was waiting for them and as they approached the car that's when it slowly riz, you know, uh, rose up from the ground and they noticed that it had a distinct color it was large and it was gray so that's the first time we have something as far as an actual color tied to the creature's look and once again they noticed that it had large glowing red eyes and that was it um, the creature um, uh, was apparently inspecting them. Um, apparent also, uh, it sounded like, uh, what's the name, Mr. Wamsley. Um, they were nearby a phone, and when they tried to get the, pol the police on the line, the creature actually went straight up to them and tried to peer in through a window of sorts. It seems like at that point, um, Mr. Wamsley was able to get into some kind of nearby home to try to call the police while the creature was nearby their parked car and that's when the creature went straight up to the window peered right at Mr. Wamsley and then left at that point again no harm in uh, no harm no foul nothing as far as the creature doing any physical damage to anybody there it just seemed to be inspecting them when they approached the parked car and then when it, when that guy went into that home, it went straight to the window inspecting him. And then that was it. It just flew off. Cut to a couple of days later, uh, November 24th. Some more people saw um, the Mothman fly in and around that TNT factory area. Cut to November 25th. There was a guy by the name of Thomas Urey. He was driving also along Route 62. It was also nearby that TNT factory and that's when he saw the creature um, not flying around, but it was standing in a field right by the road, which is kind of creepy. I mean, there's just something unsettling about seeing something in a desolate field just standing there looking at you. Um, and that's when um, Thomas stated that this creature then n saw it looking at him, and so it spread its wings, and then it took off. Um, cut to a couple days later, there was another encounter, this time a more personal encounter. There was a lady by the name of Miss Ruth Foster. She was stating that um, she saw something standing right there on her front lawn. So this is the first time that um, this Mothman has apparently visited like somebody at an actual home. And when it did so, it was standing right there on the lawn. She summoned her brother-in-law who was inside the home. He ran out to try to take a look. But when, it, but when he went out there, uh, the Mothman was no longer there. It had flown off. Cut to the next day, November 27th, and there was a young woman there in that same area that stated that um, uh, this Mothman was pursuing her. But that was it. There was no further details with regards to who the young woman was, um, what, uh, like where the location was, uh, why it was chasing her. It was just that it was something that was pursuing her, and then that was it. Um, also, at this point, apparently, there were lots of encounters, not just with the Mothman, but of these men in black. I, I think this might be actually the first instance of the characteristics or the phenomenon known as the men in black visiting locations right after something like this this kind of creature is spotted um, if anyone knows if there's any earlier tales like let's see in the 50s or in the 40s or somewhere else in the 60s where men in black were first encountered please you know let let us know but otherwise it seems like this is the first occurrence where um, these men in black suddenly started appearing started questioning started investigating people that ran into the mothman and in some cases uh, stating that 
that you know things were done almost in an intimidating manner with regards to their questioning um, they were the ones that started appearing around that time um, straight after the Mothman appearances interesting to note though it seems like they were also trying to plant seeds uh, with regards to disillusioning uh, people's thoughts of who the Mothman was uh, people were stating that they thought that they were Catholic priests uh, these men in black were capitalist priests who had come to actually exercise a a demonic creature of sorts, the creature being the Mothman himself. So how that those those that idea was planted, who knows? It could have been from the men in black themselves. But that's apparently the first instance that I could think of where these men in black again were coming around um, and investigating and uh, looking intimidating at that regard and then finally the last known instances with regards to the Mothman occurred uh, the following January January 11th 1967 and then just a few more instances later on that year um, the Mothman was sighted again they were sighted um, in and around the TNT factor area, but that was it. And then a very uh, sad tragedy occurred later on that year. The Silver Bridge, which you'll see a picture of here, was located there in West Virginia, and it collapsed on December 15, 1967. Apparently there was one single eye bar, which is like one of those long beams. It had a fracture of just like... A tiny amount like less than an inch on it and it ended up collapsing and essentially being the catalyst for the entire bridge collapsing thereafter so great was this particular tragedy that um, as you'll see pictures of here 46 people died in fact two people were never found from the wreckage so whatever happened to them uh, whatever occurred with the wreckage it was so much so that it just completely destroyed the bodies altogether but people suddenly started thinking to themselves wait a minute we have all these sightings from the Mothman and they occurred pretty much hot and heavy there in late 1966 up to uh, early 1967 and then all of a sudden there was this collapse of this bridge um, the silver bridge that had been in operation for decades I think it was um, it was working since and operational since the 20s, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a good 40 plus years that it was working. And all of a sudden it collapses. And people were thinking to themselves in that area, that is too much of a coincidence. Could the Mothman have done something uh, with regards to this bridge? They didn't really think that the Mothman did something physically to the bridge, like actually did something to that eye bar or did something to the bridge to make it collapse. But people were instead thinking that it was more on the lines of, the Mothman was there uh, to kind of give notice to the bridge and the collapse of the bridge. I don't know how people necessarily came to that conclusion, but that's what the people there um, in West Virginia, what they thought of. They said the appearances of the Mothman must have been tied to the upcoming collapse of the bridge. Like it was a way for him to forewarn that something was going to happen dangerously so to the people there in West Virginia think like think of it like like the watcher from Marvel Comics those of you that um, read comics like I do you know who exactly what I'm talking about it's a being that appears every time that there's gonna be something serious something major uh, something tragic that'll occur in the Marvel Universe it, it appears as a way to let people know hey something's about to happen that's what people were thinking with regards to the Mothman after the collapse of the bridge Again, I don't know how it ties in, how people added the two together, but that's the, that's the going that people went with um, shortly after the collapse of the bridge, and it has stayed that way for almost 50 so years. Um, as far as other sightings of the Mothman, you'll see some of these pictures here. Um, these are more contemporary sightings, obviously the nature of these photographs, the scenery, uh, you can tell that it's a much, much closer to today's dates um, as far as the uh, excitings that people have had so far though no solid 100% smoking gun proof as to a great picture of the Mothman um, as far as which is strange as it sounds I mean with the technology that people have the ability for them to whip out a phone and take ultra high resolution even if you have like a standard flip phone like I do it can still take very very good pictures I mean in, in a couple of seconds 
the fact that nobody has been able to take a good picture of the Mothman despite so many, um, um, let's say, recent sightings is strange that that's the case. But, yep, that's what's happening with the Mothman. Apparently, he's still around, and people seem to still think that any appearance he makes is a foreboding sense of doom, something as far as uh, something bad that's going to happen soon near and around that area, and so they take his sightings very, very seriously. And then as far as who the Mothman is himself, like as far what is he, a cryptid? Is he a monster? Is he some kind of UFO entity? Is he a paranormal entity? Who knows? Nobody has been able to really take a close look at him, analyze him. Obviously, um, otherwise we would have more concrete evidence tied to his existence. But um, he remains as mysterious as when he first appeared. Um, people saying that, no, he's something tied to the Men in Black, uh, some kind of government experiment. Or people saying that, no, he's tied to UFOs, somebody that visited from another planet uh, just to watch and observe us. Or people are saying, no, it's tied to something more supernatural, something demonic. Who knows? Um, again, any particular theory sounds good at this point because of the little information that people have on the Mothman himself. Um, if anyone, by the way, has any other experiences with the Mothman, any other tales that they've heard of, more recent ones, hopefully, um, within... Uh, you know, the late 2000s, something along those lines, um, then please, please post your comments, share them below. It would be fascinating to see um, what it is. One thing, though, that uh, people analyze with the Mothman is how easy it is that the Mothman sightings can be dismissed because the most commonly known skeptical answer to the Mothman is it's an owl. I mean, people are seeing an owl, but because of the lateness and the darkness uh, with his experiences uh, people running into him let's say in the middle of the night something as far as a barn owl especially one of those really large ones like the great horned owl then people misinterpret the size of something and the red eyes are none other than the reflective irises or pupils within the owls themselves which kind of makes sense because um, there was a show that I saw one time a recent one I'm trying to think if it was like Monsters in America, but I, I can't really remember. It was a couple of years back, but it go it went to show the misperception that people have when you only give them like let's say a second or two to analyze something, and whenever they tell like what they analyzed, their details are way off from what the actuality is. And what the show did is it showcased people driving past um, a route um, in the middle of the night. And the producers of the show purposely put a standing cutout of what is perceived to be like a barn owl. And they placed it right there in the middle of the field. But they didn't tell the people that there that it was there. So they wanted it to be an, uh, an element of surprise. And so when the people drove by that particular cutout and they noticed it with the, uh, let's say... Um, with their eyesight, with their far-ranging eyesight, something caught their attention, for example, to their right. They looked at it, and then they realized, oh my goodness, something is there. But by that point, it was too late um, because they would have driven past it, and then, or, then when they were no longer in its visible sight. Well, later on, the show asked them and said, what do you think it was? And people said, oh, it's this. It's something large. It had red eyes. And then when they described, like, how big it was or how big it seemed, they were, quote, stating, you know, upwards of 20 feet or so. And then the, what the producers did is they took the people right back to that same location and they showed it. And it was actually the size of something just slightly larger than your average owl. And they, and it, they kind of did it to kind of prove the misconception that people get when, again, you give them just a second or two to analyze something as they're driving by really, really quick and how uh, the mind plays tricks on you. So the idea that the Mothman and all these experiences could have been uh, something as far as a great horned owl, which is seems like the most plausible explanation, I can kind of see it. The only thing that I hesitate on 100% is how is it that so many people saw this thing under so many sec different circumstances and they all could have been fooled at the same time as far as it being a great horned owl. It's too much of a coincidence, so that's why... Um, I don't exactly give it 100% credence just yet, but who knows. So what do you guys think? Is, is it something uh, paranormal? Is it a UFO? Is it something along the lines of a government 
experiments? Is it just a great horned owl? Please post your comments, share them below. Any experiences people have too? Something that they've heard of um, recent days, recent years? That'd be great to hear too. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.